Welcome everyone. This is the portal training. Um, my name is Michelle Johnston and I'm from ITS. I'm the project and quality assurance analyst and I'm going to be going over the new portal today. So we're going to cover a few items and then I'll read your guys' questions and answer them. Um, if I see them as we go, I'll try to answer them as well. Um, if you have any questions or issues with the portal, um, please put that in a to help ticket and we'll get to that. And after the training, if you have any questions, you can always send those to to help as well. So the new portal will be rolling out on Monday, July 6th. Um, this is something that we've been working on for over a year, so we're pretty excited about that. So let's go ahead and dive in. As you can see, this is the main landing page and I am not logged in right now. So this is what um, the public will see. The portal is actually accessible to different audiences. Um, it's visible, like I said, to the public. And a lot of the information that will be out there will also be shared with our new website. Um, so let's get logged in. And as I log in, you'll see uh, different information that will be accessible only to students and employees. As you can see, you'll see a lot more information here, um, but let's just talk about this at the top right here. This is the important messages, and this is going to replace the pop-ups that are on the current portal, so there'll be no more pop-ups. And depending on the type of message, um, it can be actually dismissed, and you'll see an X in the corner here if it's if you can dismiss it. Um, I already dismissed this one, so I actually, this is what it would look like, and you can hide your dismissed, and then you can show them again as well if you accident, accidentally clicked out of it and you want to be able to see that again. So you can, this is where you can hide them and show them. And that's, um, you have to have security to put those important messages in. So we'll walk through that later. Each of these um, boxes, I'm going to call them boxes for now. You'll see the different boxes. These are actually called widgets. And in each of these widgets, you'll see a gear. And when you click on those, there'll be different settings that you can set and you can customize that. And so when you come back into the portal, um, all of those settings actually stay. And then you'll see um, different things throughout the portal that will give you uh, bread, what we're calling breadcrumbs. Um, so when you go into certain things, you can easily get back to the main landing page. So you can always go here. And if you always get into something, you can always click on the main um, Mount Community College here or here, and that will take you back to the main landing page. Let's go into the search. This is actually a pretty robust search. And I'm just going to put in enterprise. And once you get in here, a lot of people have asked about the directory and where that's at. Um, it's actually in the search now. And you can search all kinds of stuff. So you can search um, the news, events, the directory is in here now. So anybody under the enterprise will show up here. It will search the website. It will actually search your Google Drive. You do need to authorize access to the Google Drive. And I'm going to do that. And as you can see, it'll pull up anything that's in my Google Drive that has the name Enterprise in it. And then I'll pull up any departments with that name in there and anything that's in important links, which I'll show you that on the main landing page. But that actually uses OmniSearch. And you can toggle any of these off. So if you don't want to search the news or events, you just want to look in the directory, you can turn these off and on. 
And then if you want to turn them all back on, you just toggle them all back on. We're going to go to the important links widget and we're going to start off with the settings first and look at those. And this is kind of like the search, you can toggle them on and off. Um, and depending on your access, um, these might change. So I have access to this, some people don't. So i um, just going to toggle that off for now. And here's where you add any of your favorite bookmarks if you want to if you don't see something out there in the important links and you want to add it, you can add it here. I added called test because I use that a lot. So I just put that in here. You can put whatever you want in here and add it. So here's most of our main links here. As you can see, this is we took everything from the original portal and put it here. Um, you'll see a frequently used that's new, and that will actually, um, over time, they'll start to populate of what you use most often. Here's your bookmark. As you can see, there's my bookmark. Um, employees, that is a tab that employees will see. And as if a student logged in or a faculty logged in, they'll also see a student tab or a faculty tab. But the rest of these are pretty much the same. And the My Ma apps is the same as the all of our applications. And as you can see, I can see a lot of them. So sometimes I might want to use this important links at the top. And I might want to search um, for something that I use most often. So as you can see, you can see them here if you start typing. And to clear it, let's click on that. All right, let's go down to the digital ID card. And again, let's first of all go into the settings. And this is something that we use the um, employee photo on the public website. And if you want to turn that off, you would just make sure that you have it on the red that's turning off. This is turning on. Um, and you can see the, the explanation here. Also, there's going to be an employee birthday um, email that goes out every week that lists all the birthdays of all the employees for the week. So you can reach out to them and wish them a happy birthday. To get back into the digital ID card, um, this is where all of your information is. And you can go into edit this information. And what it will do is take you to the account manager page. And as an employee, you can change your information here, your address, your phone number, your emails, opt in and out of text messages. And this actually goes into DataTel. So just you want to make sure that you are careful if you change your information in here, it is going to change it in data tell. So I'm going to actually show you as a student what that looks like. It has different features for student and for faculty. And I'm I have impersonation rights for um, because I work in IT and we do a lot of testing and stuff. So you as a faculty or employee will not be able to do what I'm doing right now. Um, so you're aware. So as a student, you can see that um, they can go into edit their information as well into the account manager page and they can change their program of study. They can add emails. And as you can see, this person has not actually set up their emergency notifications. So they can take it to that link of account manager and actually put in their information um, to opt in for that. They can also see their class list. So this is what they're taking for summer. 
and they can drill down into getting more information and it actually shows their their grades, how many credits, et cetera. So this will be their final grades, not it does not show midterm grades. If I go into the the settings, the only setting really in there is to show upcoming term. So now you'll see fall as well. And it shows them the location so they know where they're going. Uh, if you were faculty, it would show your uh, classes, your current classes, and your future um, classes. And in your drill down, you'll see a little bit different. You'll see that it will take you out to um, Canvas, which the students, it takes them out to Canvas as well. And in the future, we're going to have something that takes you to roll call. And if you guys have any suggestions of what else you would like on this, feel free to email us or send us a to help ticket. and. Um, we're more than willing to make changes that make sense for you. Right, I'm going to just change back to myself. And we're going to go over to the widgets on the left, which is the events widget and the news widget. So we're going to go into the settings first. And this is um, just some different settings that you can filter how you want to see your events. You can add a tags. So it's kind of like filtering by a subject. Um, if you only, if you want to filter out your events and only want to see athletic events or um, some CTL events or um, student events, then you can tag those, filter out those by tags and only see those particular events. There are some tags that are going to be out there that you're not going to be able to um, filter out. Um, those would be the president office and student services ones for now. I'm sure that list will grow or if you feel that there needs to be some added to that, just let us know. Right now I just have my events showing from today and forward seven days. You can actually go up to nine days and you actually can go back nine days. But then your list of events will get really big. You can hide your calendar. And you can only show detailed events, and I'll show you what that looks like. So right now, this is the calendar. And right now, it shows you, this shows my week. So this is the start of the, the day. So it shows today, and it goes forward a week. And the ones that are underlined shows that there's an event. So when you hover over there, it actually shows them. If you want to just click on it, it takes you to just that event. So right now, it's just a single view, and you can click over and it does it, it shows it by day. And to reset it, you just hit reset. So if I change that, then it shows that the calendar is actually off and you can't see the calendar. I'm gonna take off the detailed events and I'll show you what that looks like. So it no longer shows the picture and all of the information. It just shows um, just a, a general description or the title of the event. And I'm gonna just reset my filters so you can see the difference. There we go. All right. So we're going to go down to the news and go to those settings and show you that that doesn't have as many uh, filters. You can filter again by tags and then you can hide your red news. And I'll show you that. So, what that means is each of these shows how many days back the news was. And if you click on it, then it goes away. And I'll show you what that looks like 
if you don't hide it, it just shows blank. But when you click on it, it just marks it as red, but it doesn't take it from your list. All right, I see a couple questions I'm going to answer before we get into um, actually the news and events and how to put those in. So the first question coming in says, can the Mott Bear Connect link be added if it's not already? And, and I'm assuming they're meeting in this important links area. And that is yes, any um, link can be added in any of these um, tabs. Uh, you just have to put a to help in or email us and let us know if it's not already in there. But I would look around or use the, the filter to look for them before you say it's not there. Um, or if it's something that you find you are the only one using, you can always bookmark it. Next question. I may have missed it. Um, can we change our address and phone number in our digital ID card? Yes, I um, sort of went over that. You can Go into the edit on here, edit information. It takes you to the account manager page. And like I said, if you change your information in there, just be aware that it does change it in data tell. Um, so it's just something you need to be aware of. What was the name of the search method you are using? And that is OmniSearch. Um, read message question or let's see once we've read the message is there an option to delete it completely or will it eventually go away or will it always be in the hidden area important notifications will be um, in the dismiss notifications area um, they'll be in here but they do have an end date so once that end date has passed they will fall off so if there's nothing out there or the end date has passed, then they'll just fall off. Um, how do we switch to student view, for example? I think I went over that already as well. Um, just because we have certain permissions to do that for uh, testing purposes, uh, we are the only ones that can look at it from a student view. Uh, I noticed that under employees, you have faculty service request TMA, the order, the work order system is no longer operating under TMA, and this should be removed. Uh, okay, thank you, and we'll make note of that. If uh, you guys find something that's no longer being used out there, and the link needs to be removed, we'll be happy to remove links. Um, just let us know, either to help, or you can email one of us. <laughs> is EMS data populated in the calendar? No, not at this time. We would love to have a the calendar be the central source of truth, but right now it's it's not. Um, but we are encouraging those that manage a calendar to let us know, and we can feed that data into this calendar. You just have to put a two help ticket in, and we can work with you on that. All right, I am going to go back to events and news and kind of drill into that a little bit more. So as you can see, they're actually the events and news is an actual link. And it actually opens up an actual events page. So you can actually toggle between the two instead of going back out to the portal page you can toggle between the two. So you have an events page and you can do all the same functions as I showed you before. It has a calendar, you can go over the different dates, you can filter by tags, and then you can also um, filter that you can see if there's food available at those events. And I'm gonna go to the news one. And this is pretty much the same thing. You can filter, you can search through the news by looking in keywords. You can view by tags. And th this right here is called a 
featured event. So when you're putting in a news and you want it to be a featured event, that's what this means. It just is a larger image of your event and then you can, or your news and you can click on it and um, read it. So there's several ways to put in a news or event. And if you're from this page, you can click on the, the green plus sign. But if you're back at in the portal page, you can get to it from here. So I'm gonna do a news one because it's a little bit less information to put in. But if you get in here and you wanna change your type, let's say, oh, I meant to put in event and I have news. This is, you just hit that and it gives you the different um, publication types. This is, you can put in an event, uh, news, and if you have the security to do so, you can put in an important notification. You put a title in. You have to put a tag. Um, this is just the list of tags that we have right now. I'm sure they'll grow over time, or if you feel there needs to be one, you can just request one, and you can put in multiple tags as well. A published date is the date that you want it to display on the portal. So I'm going to put today's date. You have to pick an audience. Um, like I said, we have events that are public. So this would mean people can see it that are not logged in. You can have it just for students. You can have employees. Or if you want student and employees, um, it would be internal. And here's where we have that featured event if you want that. I'm not going to get really fancy. You need an image. And you can remove the image here. You can view it. And you need a um, description. Uh, and that's for ADA compliance. You can add an attachment if you want. I'm not going to add one. And we'll go over this in just a minute. But for now, I'm just going to, you can save it. If you want to save it and make changes to it later, you don't want it to necessarily um, be published. You just want to save it for, and then make changes, just hit save. Um, if you're ready to submit it, you can submit it, you can preview it, you can clone it, and you'll see a prove and deny just because that's, um, if, you are, if you manage the communications, you'll have that access, but most people won't. So everything does need to be, go through an approval process. And I'm gonna hit approve. Now, after you submit something or save it, then you can also put in an info channel request for it as well. And that's just a simple, easy um, couple step process uh, here. So you can actually um, fill it out. It's pretty easy. You just have to have a start and end date. And I believe this is set so you can't put anything in for uh, three days. So it kind of already pushes that date out. And that doesn't automatically go out to the info channel. It has to be approved. So it actually puts in a two help ticket, as you can see. And then our web team will get with you to work with you and make sure that everything is good before it actually gets published out there. All right, so let's go out there and look at our news. So here it is. 
And the last thing I want to show you is you can actually tie multiple news and events together. So if you created an event and you want to tie different news stories to it, um, so when someone's viewing your event, it shows different news articles with it as well. Or if you want to just tie different news um, events together or, or news publications together that are similar, you can do that as well. So I'm going to just going to show you how to do that really quick. And I'm going to show it from the news um, page because it's a little bit easier. Okay, as you can see, like some of these Star Wars ones are um, kind of similar. So we're going to just tie them together. So Kirk actually already did this. So it, this is what it would look like. So here's the main one. And then these are actually tied to it. So we're going to edit this one. I'm going to copy this code. And then you have to save it and then copy it. So you can see now these are all going to link to it. Save that. So as you can see now it has a bunch of related news. I know that's a lot to take in, um, but that's why we are actually recording this session. So you can go back and look at it and we're gonna probably have some short little um, portal videos as well um, out there for some of this stuff. So I think that is about it. I don't know if I mentioned the Ask Charlie over here. That's our chat bot um, and that actually um, it's more robust over time as people ask questions, it gets better and better at having the answers in there. And I think the last question I might have is when creating an event, does it pick a room? Um, it is scheduled. And I think what you're asking is. If it's scheduling the room reservation when you're entering an event, which that is the answer to that is no. Um, we're assuming you already have the room scheduled uh, how you normally do before you advertise your event. And if anybody, anybody have any more questions? No? All right. Well, if there's no more questions, you're free to drop off and I'll stick around for a little bit and answer any more questions as they come in. But thank you. And um, we're excited to roll this out starting Monday. Thanks, everyone.